what the, the, each lobe is doing, these different cortices, which is just one little part of the lobe, our primary motor cortex, what it does, our primary motor cortex is a, giving us the voluntary control of our skeletal muscles, the rest of this, um, your premotor cortex, your uh, frontal eye fields can also be found here, but this is also where a lot of your higher order cognition is happening. So concentrating, decision making, planning, all of those things are happening in your frontal lobes. Your parietal lobes have your primary somatosensory cortex, the somatosensory information. So it's really helping you interpret all of the sensory information that's coming in. Your temporal lobes has your primary auditory cortex, your primary olfactory cortex. It's got parts that are associated with memory, uh, visual memory, but this is including the memory part. Uh, and then your occipital lobes have your primary visual cortex. Your insula is where your your primary gustatory cortex is, and that is this region deep inside your temporal lobe. So in order to get to the insula, you've got to really pull one of these models apart, and you got to pull this out. And this, like, this region where this is plugging in right here is your insula. So I'm not probably going to test you on it on the model, but you do need to know what it's for. It's your primary gustatory cortex. Gustation is your sense of taste. So, the last thing I'm going to show you today are what's called the homunculi, or a singular homunculus. And the homunculus is a map that we can lay out on either the primary motor cortex or the primary somatosensory cortex. And it tells us how much brain real estate is attributed to each body part and what that part of the brain is controlling. So your brain doesn't have pain receptors. So if you have to have brain surgery, they can cut your head open. I mean, that there's pain receptors there. But uh, once they get through to your brain, you don't have to be asleep. And it's better for you not to be asleep when they're working on your brain so that that way if they mess something up that's really vital, they can tell. So how they figured these homunculi out is just doing brain surgery on people. And then so you poke them right here. What do you move? Oh, well, you start blinking. All right, if I poke you right here, then you start moving your lip. So this is, you can see, this is mapped out on your primary motor cortex, which is the precentral gyrus. And they've just mapped out the body, and you can tell what each of these regions um, is doing, which part of the brain is, is controlling the movement or initiating the movement to that part of the body. And what's interesting, if you look here, your hand has a huge amount of space compared to like, I don't know, your arm gets hardly anything. But if you think about it, your hand, you have to have fine motor control of your hand. Your hands are your best tools. So you get a lot of territory for controlling that hand. Whereas, you know, your arm or your elbow, you're hardly moving those guys at all. I mean, your arm a lot more than your elbow, but they don't get nearly the same amount of space. So if I were to give you a, a test question, I would have all of these words probably out of here, but I could say something like, and this is, this is the left side of the brain, so if this is lateral, then this is the left side of the brain. I could say something like, what if I stimulate it right here? What happens? And you'd have to be able to take me through the conduction pathway that goes down and moves the right hand. So sidedness matters. The left side of your brain controls the right side of your body. The right side of your brain controls the left side of your body. So just be aware of that and you'll get, um, I believe, well definitely on one of your homeworks before the test you'll get practice with your sightedness. So that's the primary motor cortex. Next is our primary somatosensory cortex. So somatosensory is the part that you're aware of. And we map it out on the post-central gyrus. And what you can see is that they, the same thing, they poke a whole bunch of people who are getting brain surgery and then they can map out, well, where do you feel? Where are you arriving sensation? And what we learn then is that sensation is all in your head. So if I just poke your brain right here, you're going to feel it on your hand, even though there's nothing touching your hands. If I poke your brain right here, you're going to feel it on your lips, even though there's nothing on your lips. So. And, and that's the thing too, if information doesn't make it all the way up to here, you're not aware of it. So this, this is your somatosensory cortex. So for you to be aware of any of this stimulation, whether it be heat or pain or pressure, it's got to make it all the way into the receptor, in through the spinal nerve, and all the way up through your thalamus.
filaments is going to ship it off and it has to make it all the way here before you're aware of it. So if you think about like um, paraplegic people, they are sitting on their butt all day. Their butt receptors are feeling pressure, but it doesn't make it up to their somatosensory cortex, so they're not aware of it. So just kind of keep that in mind. Something interesting to note here, again, the hands have a lot of territory, but look how much territory the lips and your jaws and your mouth get. So that, I mean, should let you know that you've got to be pretty sensitive there. It kind of makes sense. You've got to eat your food there. You, I mean, you've got to be aware of what's going on, control your tongue and things like that.